Bless us now as we preach the word of the Lord. May we preach that which becometh sound doctrine and gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. We're all in this together. We, the worshiping servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, and you know the Lord gave me the theme for this year, worshiping servants. Jesus says, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thy serve. And by the way, the Barley Boys did a great job during the um, AIM conference as they referenced the worshiping servants. And they dealt with the terms and even brought in the Greek words. And I said, what, what a family. that just says volumes about uh, dad, brother Barley, Amen, and his lovely wife, praise the Lord, Sister Barley, and, and the whole family. And you know, you can't overlook the matriarch of the family, that beautiful mother, Mother Barley. God bless, woman of God. The family, they're tight. And those boys did a great job delivering God's word. And... Uh, when they talked about the worshiping servant, they were on point. Jesus says, we, thou shalt worship. That is, you will, it's like a dog licking the hand of its master. The dog is, is, is excited about being around its master. We, we got to stay so close to God that we just love him and enjoy him. I was talking to the Lord yesterday. I was riding and doing some things and I just found myself telling Jesus how much I love him. And Lord, how beautiful you are. And oh God, how good you are. Do you do, you do that? You know, just throughout your day, oh, you just notice the goodness of the Lord. So, oh God, I just thank you. I thank you for being good. Lord, you're better to me than you have to be. Amen. I, I don't have to have the newest car on the road to thank God for transportation. I don't have to have, to have, the, I don't have, to have the, the largest house on the street to thank God for a place to live. Amen. Amen. I don't have to have all the money to thank God for what I do have. Amen. I don't, things don't have to be perfect for me to thank God for uh, the good things that are. And you have to know how to celebrate when it's time to celebrate. Uh, I, 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 that's one thing I learned from Proverbs. Proverbs says, in the time when good things happen, Proverbs says rejoice. Some of us don't even enjoy good times. Uh-uh, you got to get that out. You can't, you can't live like that. You won't live long. You got to know how to celebrate <clears throat> the highs in life because the lows are coming. Sometimes I put my phone aside so I don't see no low, so I can enjoy this high. Because if you don't celebrate when God is blessing you, you'll find yourself in a, a continuous state of dealing with heavy stuff. And that will break your spirit. That will wear you out. It will change your personality. You'll go from being a person who is pleasant to an individual who is unpleasant. Praise the Lord. You, you don't want, or some people can't enjoy vacations. You don't want to be that person who you, God has blessed you and you finally can, can go to that island. There's the pine trees. There's the soft breeze. They're playing the little, mm -hmm, you know, Hawaiian music or whatever. And there you go talking about what the saints ain't doing. Oh, no. Learn how. Learn how. You ask my wife, ask my daughter, my son-in-law, my family. They know I'm, I'm adamant about that. Learn how to enjoy the pleasant streets. I was thanking the Lord. I was just thanking him. I was thanking him. Th my mind went back to the meeting last week. And all that we went through building up to the AIM service. 
and how God gave us a revival. And so I, 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 took, I took that time. I didn't, want to, I, didn't take, I didn't take on anything else. I just thanked him. I just thanked him. Praise the Lord. And uh, um, thou sh that's worship. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. You know, Satan asked Jesus to fall down and worship him. Only an inferior person would fall down and worship a superior officer. So Satan was telling Jesus, I want you to acknowledge that I'm superior to you. Uh, Jesus had enough about that. Jesus rebuked him and said, get thee behind me, Satan. What? I am God the Son. I made you. See, the only, the only, the only thing in creation that was not created uh, was the Godhead. God existing in three persons is eternal. Everything else was made, including Lucifer. Amen. Amen. Some of these false religions got it wrong. They call Lucifer Jesus' uh, brother. No, he's not. Jesus has no brother. Jesus is God the Son. And, uh, and so he says to Jesus to bow down and worship me. Jesus says... Um, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. We serve the Lord in the AIM conference. We serve the Lord at the abortion clinic. We serve the Lord when we deal with each other's uh, tough times in life. We serve the Lord as we feed the hungry. We serve the Lord as we preach the gospel. Like what we're doing right now, we're serving. We're serving. So we are the Lord's worshiping servants. And you, know, you have to admit, it was an apropos, young man, I'm so glad to see you today, brother. Brother gave his heart back to the Lord last Sunday. Don't he look good today? Sharp as a tack. He told me, he says, preacher, I'm getting close to God. Amen. And uh, I walked in, when I saw him, my heart leaped. It was just good to see him. Um, we, 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 we're, we're the Lord's servants. Amen. And, and we worshiping servants are in a fight, whether we know it or not, together. Whether we know this or not, uh, this message is to the body of Christ, it's, it's to the true believers. Jesus told us something about the fight that we would have. The Lord said in John's gospel, chapter number 15, and verse 18, he says this, <clears throat> If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world... Therefore, the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have hated and persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. Amen. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. See, the world hates the believer because the world hates Jesus. See, there's no point in us trying to um, curry but so much favor in this lost and wicked society. It, 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 the problem with the society is that it hates Jesus. See, much of what we're seeing played out is a hatred of Jesus Christ. 
I oppose BLM. I oppose critical race theory. I oppose the 1619 project. I oppose all of these things. First and foremost, I don't oppose them because I think that there's no racism in America. Of course there is. But I oppose them because, first of all, most of those, ide those doctrines and ideologies come from Marxists. I'm not calling them names. I'm calling them what they call themselves, self-professed Marxists. And to be a Marxist, you must believe that there is no God. It is required. Atheism is required to, to practice and to participate in Marxism. See, there's no room for the church, even though churches put up BLM signs. The founders of BLM themselves confess that they, have, that they are Marxists. So if you, you're telling me that your organization is an organization that has in its roots atheism, then whatever uh, you may say that I may sort of kind of agree with, I can't get with you. Because the heart of your teachings is that Jesus is not God. Therefore, the Bible is not right. And if we, if, if I can set that aside, you know, a guy tried that one time on an interview. We, we had, we had one, we had good fellowship. And then he, he tried, he said, uh, well, we need to kind of set aside the things that divide us and, and concentrate on the things that unite us. And my position on that is, well, that depends on what it is. Because there are some things that I can't set aside. And turns out in the conversation, initially, the thing that they wanted us to set aside was the one thing that I can't set aside. I can't set aside the Lord Jesus. I can't set aside that he is God the Son. I can't set aside that he's the only Savior. See, no matter what else we may agree upon, if we disagree on that, we can't walk together. We can't because that's, a, that's not a minor point. That's a major point. See, because Jesus has called us, are you praying for me, to himself. And the Christian's job in life, the Christian's number one goal, the Christian's number one responsibility is to represent Jesus. Amen. All, everything else we do is designed to shed or to shine a positive light on Jesus Christ. Are you praying for me? So uh, the world is going to hate the Christian. And as, I'm going to tell you something that I see spiritually. Spiritually, I see the, the true believers being surrounded more and more. More and more. And uh, the, the numbers of true believers who really believe the Bible and who believe that the Bible is the written, inerrant, infallible, holy word of God who believe that the Bible is correct, the Bible is true, the Bible is the word of God, the number of believers who believe this are shrinking. There are those who believe now that the Bible contain the words of God. That's very different from believing that the Bible is the word of God. There are those who claim to be Christians who believe that Jesus is the Savior, but they don't believe he's the only Savior. Well, to be a Christian, you have to believe that Jesus is the only Savior. Praise the Lord. It has become fashionable in our community now for us to question the genuineness and the authenticity of scripture. Well, to be a Christian, 
You have to believe that the word of God is true and that every word of God is right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the number of Christians who still get their morals and ethics from the Bible is decreasing. The number of churches that still have Sunday schools are decreasing. I said the other night, we've gotten rid of Sunday school and, and we've gotten rid of testimony service and we sing all the time and then half them songs are long and sad. We need to make sure we give folk a chance to stand up and testify. You know, when I first got saved, it helped me stay saved. I, it, 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 take, it would take all week to build up enough courage for Friday night service to stand up and say, giving honor to God, pastor and the first lady, saints and friends. And there we go, getting my foot wet in public speaking, standing up, talking for the Lord. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Amen? The enemy is trying to surround the saints. But I'll tell you one thing, uh, God is on our side. This message is to true believers. One of the major points, just follow me for a few minutes and I'm almost done and we're going to go home and uh, enjoy Father's Day. Praise the Lord. I kind of peeked and I see that feast that Pam has prepared for the man. And... Uh, so I want to get to it, but man shall not live by bread alone. See, so we need to eat this. Praise God. First, one of the major points of the text is that the apostle Peter warns his flock of the danger of making the fact of God's sovereign care an excuse for inactivity. He warns them, God is sovereign, but there is also something that you must do. God is in charge, but you can't just shrug your shoulders and say, I'm not worried about anything because in the end, his will is going to prevail. So there's nothing for me to do but to just let the Lord handle everything. He says, oh, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Verse 6 through 7 speaks in our text of the sovereignty of God. He says in um, verse uh, 6 and 7, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Look at God's sovereignty. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Isn't that wonderful? And God cares, and he's sovereign. And sovereign, that is, he has supreme power and he has the power to exalt you when the time is right and when God says the time is right there's nothing that the devil can do to keep you from being exalted but with knowing this he still says you can't let this knowledge of God's sovereign power rob you of your part in this. There is something that you have to do. See, you, you're not going to stay saved through my effort only. See, it ain't my job to, to, to follow you home, live it for you, read the Bible for you, check on you every day, text you every day. Uh, some preachers do that. It wouldn't cross my mind to do that. I, my responsibilities are too great. Every, all the time. And, and, and you would never mature. You would never grow. Amen. I'm told of preachers that I guess that's their, their new state. So, so I'm just going to text you and check on. I, I don't want you to check on me all the time. 
I'm grown. Amen. Praise the Lord. Say, so well, every time you cross, you, you, every time you cross my mind, Pastor, I'm gonna call you. Don't do that. Every time I cross your mind, pray for me. See, so, because I, I might cross your mind too often. <laughs> but that third time, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good talking the sovereignty of God God's sovereign care is real look at chapter 4 of 1 Peter and uh, we're going to begin at verse 12 thank God for your YouTube and Facebook live y'all give me some love give me some love and some claps amen Peter said this, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Notice the way it's constructed. It doesn't say that may happen to you, which is to try you. All believers have to contend with calamity. All believers are going to be tested by fire. Fiery trial in life is when something very difficult happens to you. And he says, when it happens to you, don't treat it as though some strange thing has happened unto you. He says, but instead, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad with exceeding joy isn't that amazing we could preach this the rest of the day instead of thinking something strange has happened to you he says rejoice in as much, in as, much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings and then he said in verse 14 if you be Reproach. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, if the cancel culture comes against you because you are a Christian, if you're called a homophobe, judgmental, too harsh, too mean, if you're called names for the reproach of Christ, for Jesus, he didn't say go on a fast. And ask God to fix it. He says, happy are ye. Be happy about it. Because it is proof. It says, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. If that's the case, not too many believers have the Holy Ghost. If, if proof that the spirit of glory rests upon you is your being insulted and attacked and called names, for your stand for Jesus. Well, how many of us have the Spirit? How many of us have been called names? How many of us have the world labeled? How many of us have been ostracized and insulted? The, this, the Bible says here that when the world does this to you, that's proof that the spirit of glory is resting upon you. So the next time you talk to somebody and they ask you, are you still over at upper room and you're over there with Wooten and well, what about that stuff he's saying? And you let them all, just let them all talk, let them go on and say what they got to say because you know if I would roll up on them, they would shut up. But let them say all that they got to say because the world is full of cowards. All that they got to say and then when they finish, say now you tell them, you know what? You just proved, according to Peter's writings, that my pastor have the Holy Ghost. Because you just reproached him and me and the whole church for the cause of Christ. You're getting on us because we still agree with God. Isn't that something? Amen. That's something to think about. You don't have to clap, but it's written right here. It says... Uh, if you be reproached, old English, if modern, if you are, but if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, 
He, Jesus, is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you, Peter says, suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. See, there's no blessings in suffering for stuff like that. But there's a blessing for suffering for Christ. Verse 16 says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Verse 19, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls unto him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Other words, just keep doing right. Praise the Lord, even if you suffer, if you suffer as a Christian, just keep doing right. Commit the keeping of your souls to him. I'm counting on God to keep me. I don't count on people to keep me. I thank God that God has put good people in my life, but my faith I'm not counting on them because you can't. But you can count on Christ. He will keep you and uh, because he's a faithful creator. And you have to commit the keeping of your souls to him and you see his sovereignty. And yet in our text, he, Peter, commands all believers to submit to God. And to each other. He tells the younger believers to submit to the older believers. Not only out of respect of age, but out of respect of their spiritual maturity. Chapter, in this same chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, as we see them again, says, uh, Peter encourages all believers to practice humility and to trust God with their cares. Humility commends us to God and fellow humans which is the opposite effect of arrogance and conceit. So he says in 6 and 7, allow me, forgive me for the redundancy, but I'm headed somewhere. He says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. We must all get this. Belief in the sovereignty of God does not permit us to sit back and do nothing. We, the flock of God, must, even after we realize that God has supreme power, we must, according to verse 8, number one, we must be sober. Oh my, Peter, the writer here, knew something about Satan's attacks and how Satan works. After all, in Luke 22 and 31, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. That is, Simon, Satan hath sought and obtained permission from God the Father to attack you to come against you, to sift uh, as wheat is rough action that symbolizes tempting them to spiritual ruin. Satan wants to destroy you. And he sought and obtained permission, uh, Peter, to destroy you. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. Peter knew firsthand the price that one would pay for being overconfident and for failing to take the devil seriously. After all, it was Peter who said to the Lord, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Matthew 26 and 33. But Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. 
Three times you're going to deny me before the cock crows, Peter. And instead of Peter listening to what Jesus was saying, instead of Peter applying a sober mind, Peter's response was, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. And not only Peter, but likewise, the Bible says, also said all of the disciples. In Matthew 26 and 35. They didn't listen to him. They didn't hear him. They weren't sober. He told them tonight, you're going to forsake me. They, they, they didn't let him finish even saying what he was trying to say before they responded, no way. Many of us are that way. Overconfidence will be your enemy. It will be your downfall. Now in the text, now listen to me, some 60 years later, in the text, 60 years later, for, for, for second, first Peter was written in the A.D. 60s. Peter writes that he wasn't sober like he should have been. Uh, that he should have listened some 60 years ago when Jesus stood up and said in Matthew 26 and 31, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered abroad. When Jesus said that, they should have, they should have stopped right then and said, Lord, help me. They should have stopped right then and said, Lord, uh, do something. And they didn't realize that when Jesus said, uh, for it is written, you will smite the sheep uh, and the, shall smite the, the shepherd and the flock shall scatter, that Jesus was quoting a quote that was made 520 years uh, prior. The prophet Zechariah said in Zechariah 13 and 7, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall scatter and I will turn my hand Upon the little ones. Jesus said 520 years ago. The prophet Zechariah said. That this would happen. They should have heard him. Instead they were not sober. The word sober means to be circumspect. Circumspect is like when you're walking. Through a field of thorns. And you're carefully placing your foot in just the right area so as not to get a sand spur or a thorn or a sticker in your foot. So you're gingerly walking, trying to be careful. Jesus said, you got to be sober. Sober is careful to consider all related circumstances. To be sober means to be serious minded. Sober means to take the realistic approach to life. To be sober means to be intelligent. To be intelligent concerning the stratagems of the devil. The sober mind understands how Satan works. And it seems to me that there are not too many sober saints out there today. You got to let God give you discernment. Fathers in leading our families. Parents in raising your children. You've got to be sober. Be sober in paying attention to what they watch. I said earlier that the devil is just using Title IX. There is nothing like Title IX to turn our girls out. In most of these sports leagues, 90% uh, of the people involved are lesbians. And they're taking our girls and you sending them off and don't go to check out anything yourself. And uh, they find themselves surrounded by wicked people. And, and the next thing you know, your child have been turned out. The coaches are messed up. The players are messed up. The, the home office is messed up. Oh, this is the work of the devil. The saint has to be sober-minded. 
when you go to the college campus, young people, you got to be sober-minded. Praise the Lord. You got to pay attention to how the devil operates and how the devil works because Satan will get you and, uh, and, and he'll have you playing with fire and you won't even realize how dangerous it is. What was Peter saying? Peter was saying to them, don't make the mistake I made back in the day. I, it, was like, it was like it was yesterday. I can remember Peter said, I was not sober. I didn't hear Jesus. I didn't hear him right. He said that we were going to all uh, forsake him that night. I should have gone into prayer. But instead of praying, I said, that'll never happen to me. And I believed it until uh, it was too late. And a damsel walked up to me and said, you're one of them. I saw you with Jesus, and he went to cussing and denying the Lord. He denied the Lord that night three times. The Lord said to him, the Lord said to him, to all of them, that something's going to happen tonight that will cause you to go astray. I say to every one of us, society is changing. Society is changing. Things are shifting. You got to up your commitment to Jesus. You got to up your commitment to church. You got to bring your children. You, you got to up your commitment to prayer because things are changing. And I know you may say, well, that can never happen to me. Peter said the same thing. He said, uh, though all men may forsake you, I will never forsake you. And yet he forsook him. You know why? Because he was not sober. He was drunk on his own success. He was a legend in his own mind. He, he thought he was wonderful. All you had to do is ask him. And his opinion of his strength and of his power was too high. And the devil tricked him. Oh my, not only did the devil get him for not being sober, but the devil got him because he was also not vigilant. Now what I love about him is he's using his failures to help us all. Peter said, not only can you not afford to be sober, he said, but don't you make the mistake I made. He says, you got to make sure that you are vigilant. Because he says, be sober, be vigilant. Vigilant means be watchful. Peter failed to watch. Yes, he did. Mark tells us in Mark chapter 14 how Peter, James, and John failed to keep watch. Peter said, it's like yesterday, 60 years later, and I still remember when Jesus uh, took us with him in the garden of Gethsemane. And the Bible said in Mark 14 and 33, it says he taketh, and he taketh with him Peter, James, and John and began to be uh, sore amazed and to be very heavy and said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. And I heard him say, tarry ye here and watch. And when he went forward and uh, just went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed, he said, if it were possible, let this hour pass from me. And uh, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thy will. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping. They weren't watching. They fell asleep. And he didn't say anything to James nor to John, but he said something to the leader. He said, Peter, Simon, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Why was it so easy for you to fall asleep? Why was it, how could it be so easy for you to get into the habit of not going to church? 
Why was it so easy for the churches to close their doors and seem like it's so hard now for them to open them? How was it, why was it so easy for saints to get used to not being in the house of God? Good God Almighty, Jesus said, how, how was it so easy for you to fall asleep? I didn't ask you to stay awake for 48 hours. I just asked you to watch with me for one hour. He said, watch ye and pray, lest you enter into temptation. For the spirit is truly ready but the flesh is weak. So he said, you need to pray to get power over your flesh because your born again spirit is willing, but your body may be tired. And again, he went away and prayed, praise the Lord and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them sleeping again for their eyes were heavy neither wished they what to, what to answer him. They didn't even know what to say to him. He said, why did you fall asleep on me again? They said, Lord, we don't know what to tell you. And then the Bible said, and he cometh a third time and said unto them, he found them the third time sleep. And he said unto them, sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. While he was being betrayed into the hands of sinners, the saints were asleep. I'm telling you, saints, we need to wake up. We need to ask God to anoint us to wake up. Because the world is plotting against the church. The world is plotting against the saints. We're being surrounded and many of us don't even recognize it. All kinds of things are going on in this world today. And they're setting the saints up to try to shut the church down. And the saints cannot afford to not be vigilant. We've got to see what's going on. And I hear Jesus telling us to watch and pray. And here is Peter 60 years later writing in a letter telling the saints, don't make the same mistake I made. I fell asleep when I should have stayed awake. I was drunk when I should have been sober. And I'm crying out to everybody saying to you, wake up. Don't wake up like the woke folk are because they are asleep. But wake up to the things of God. Wake up to what God is doing and wake up to what the devil is doing. In the name of Jesus, Father, give me strength not to be sleeping when I should be awake. He said, wake up. He said, wake up. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, seeketh whom he may devour. Keep your head on a swivel. Pay attention to what's going on, because the devil is busy. The devil is busy, but God is able to keep us all if we would just wake up, if we would just be sober. This is something that you have to do. This is something that I must do. I know that God is sovereign, but we still got to work out our own salvation and we've got to resist the devil. He said, be sober, be vigilant, and then resist the devil. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Remain a Christian. Push back against him. Bring me up now. Remain a Christian. Push back against the devil. Stand on the word. And the Lord will. He'll see you through every time. And he said, after doing that and resisting the enemy in the 
faith. He says something that I find amazing. He said, knowing this, that the same thing that you're going through, other believers are going through the same thing. It's a trick of the devil to make you think that ain't nobody suffering like you are suffering, that ain't nobody hurting like you are hurting, that no one is down like you are down. Just the opposite is true. It may not be the same trial, but it has the same effect. We're all in this together. We're going through the battles of the last days and as never before we got to pray for each other as never before we got to keep each other encouraged and then you got to think these kinds of thoughts if my brother around the corner is able to stand for Jesus and he's going through the same thing I am if he can stand I can stand if my brothers and sisters who are suffering for Jesus in foreign countries, in other states, in other places, if God is able to keep them, then God is able to keep me. Yeah! Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. It reminds me of the song that says, I'm bound for Mount Zion way out on a hill and if anybody if anybody if anybody make it shall I I will if you can make it I can make it if you can take it I can take it and I know that what's going on in me is going on in you because we're all fighting the same good fight of faith look at your neighbor and tell a neighbor we're all in this together let's keep on shouting keep on living holy keep on serving the lord i know how you feel we're all I was riding one day with our riders and this same lesson, this same lesson blessed me real good. We were struggling and one day it was hot. Good God Almighty, sun beaming down. And that was that day that we got in a hundred miles in one day and we're all out there on the trail trying to make it. I was hurting, my feet were hurting, back was hurting, wrist hurting, but we still got so many miles to go. And while we were riding, I can't remember who it was, but one of the riders said, they said, my foot is hurting. And then the rest of us said, so am I. Somebody else said, my back. I said, you know what mine is too? And as we began to talk, while we were riding, we figured out that all of us was feeling the same pain, that all of us was being challenged in the same way. And I looked over at my brother and I said to myself, if he can ride in pain, I can too. If he can strive through the pain, so can I. And I'm telling you today that if my brother can stand for Jesus, hallelujah, with the devil trying to pull him down, well, that same Jesus who has given him power to stand, he will give me power to stand. If my sister can serve the Lord, not feeling her best, but she's still able to come out to church. She's still able to clap her hands. Well, that gives me power. That lets me know that I'm able to serve also. Hallelujah. Sometimes, even with running in your feet, your feet may still hurt, but yours are the only one hurt. Everybody 
is heading, but you gotta keep on running anyhow. Say yeah, yeah. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. Woo. Oh, I can't hear you praising him. I just want you to begin, before I close this message, I just want you to begin to just look around. Just look around the saints in here. Just look around. You may not know it, but that very thing that has happened to you, that discouraged you, it happened to them too. Maybe not on the same day. Maybe not in the same hour. Maybe not in the same way. But rest well assured, it's a trick of Satan to make you think that you've been picked out to be picked on. No believer gets picked out to be picked on. We all go through the same things at one point or another. And it's a comforting thought to know that if they are going through and they are making it, I can do the same for the same Christ who's in them is the Jesus who is in me. The same God who enables them is the same God who enables me. How many warriors do I have in this house today? And you ought to tell yourself, if God has anointed her to be a fighter for Jesus, then God will anoint me to be a fighter also. If God have given him power to run through troops and to leap over walls, he's given me that same power. Ah, oh Lord, I want you to know that the same Jesus who gives me power to stand is Jesus in you. So saints, let's stand together. Let's fight together. Let's pray together. Let's gain the victory together. Let's beat the devil together. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Thank you, Lord. You're not alone. Somebody else have gone through the same thing. They just didn't tell you about it, but they can testify and let you know that he's able, he's able to bring you out. He's able, ah, yeah, able to see you through. Somebody giving praise in the building. Woo! He's able, he's able knowing that the same afflictions that your brothers are going through in the world, that you're going through, they are going through. Then he puts the icing on the cake and says, but the God of all grace. Who have called us unto his eternal glory. By Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while. Now, you know who determines how long uh, a while is? You. God, but you. You see, if you're not sober, if you're not vigilant, if you're inactive, your while may last 10 years because you're not doing your part for God to get you through and to get you out. See, see, you got to do your part. You, you can't wait on somebody else to pray for you. You can't wait on someone else to be vigilant for you. You can't count on someone else to be sober for you. You have to be sober for yourself. Sober for yourself. Kelly, you have to want it for yourself. See. See. You 
there are certain things that no one can give you. You have to provide that yourself. I can be sober-minded for you all day long, but if you're not sober-minded yourself, if you're not serious about it yourself, if you don't really, uh, you don't re you're not really sure, or you're dead in the water. Some of you, God, have given you a good family, given you a good wife or a good husband, and, 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 and you ain't quite sure whether or not you know you want that or not anymore. You're a fool. Satan is tricking you. You're not sober. You're not thinking. You are now chasing everything. You are chasing everything. You are going after everything in the streets. You're going after everything that you already have at home. But for a lack of sobriety and a lack of vigilance, you don't see it anymore. Y'all don't like my preaching? You don't see it. Huh? You don't see it. There was a time when you saw it, but now you don't see it. Oh, last year about this time, or year before last, you were holding on to God with everything you got in you, but you let the wrong crowd. And the wrong people rob you of your sobriety and your vigilance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sobriety and your vigilance. Your sobriety. When, so, when your sobriety goes and your vigilance goes, you know what's next? You lose the ability to resist. See, the Bible says, whom you resist steadfast in the faith. You can't resist the devil steadfast if you're not vigilant. And if you're not sober. So then now you are sitting duck for him to pounce on you without warning. But God loves us all so much that he gave us this word of warning. Every believer has got to come up. Every believer in these last days. These are serious times. Amen. Jesus may come back any moment, but he probably won't right now. Now, if he does, even I'm like John. John said in his day, even so come, Lord Jesus. But if he doesn't, I wonder who will be left here loving him and serving him and walking up right before him in true holiness like we used to. What happened to you? Did success go to your head? What happened to you? Did praise get to you? What happened? Did tragedy adversely affect you? What happened? What happened? Amen. God said, tell them we're in this together. Last night, uh, it really didn't matter. I, don't, I, I, I didn't really, really care who won. It was interesting. The Brooklyn Nets got eliminated. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are going to move on. Kevin Durant did a magnificent job. He delivered enough points to win. But major pieces of his team was hurt. Kyrie out altogether, and then the other, uh, Harden, was hobbled, hamstring problems. Despite Kevin's best effort, some of the weaker pieces 
caused them to be eliminated. They were all one team. They were all in it together. In this, we don't want our pieces to get injured. Y'all don't follow me. And those whom God have raised up now all of a sudden, and the Lord has set you on high. See, Satan waited his time, said, oh, yeah, I, I see him now. He's praising the Lord. The devil is, see, the devil is patient. You can, you can score a victory in Christ in 2017. He'll wait to 2019 to make his move against you. If all of that, if by 2021, you're not even a major player in God now. That's the way Satan works. He plays the long game. We play the short game. We play today and this service. Where's your family going to be in the long game? The long game. He don't, he don't, he don't play the short game. This Sunday, you're on display. Uh, the uh, the Williams family, uh, the the Carnes family, uh, this family, that family, this preacher, that preacher, and everybody's celebrating you. Satan says, "I wait, I wait, I wait." Now, three years later. You come back, you want to know, are they still on fire? Preacher pointed out, he celebrated the Miller family. Satan says, I'll wait. I'll wait. Why are you being celebrated? The Brodies, I'll wait. Why are you being celebrated? I'll wait. I'll wait and I'll Study, and I'll find who's weak. I wait. Are you hearing me? Facebook Live, YouTube. Are you hearing me? I wait. This is why every believer have to work out their own salvation. See, but 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 if you don't, if you do not. Failure to do so adversely affects us all. Hence, we're all in it together. I need you. You need me. Glory to God. And Christ is counting on us. And all of us can count on him. There come a time where you have to come up and stay up. For the good of the whole. I couldn't come to church the other day, Pastor, because I felt bad. I always say I understand. But I often wonder, do you know how many came on anyway? <laughs> because they play the long game. If every time you feel bad, you can't make it. What if everybody did that? I told him in eight o'clock class, I might, I might preach one day's a message entitled, I'm tired too. I couldn't make it because I was tired. I'm tired too. Everybody gets tired. Everybody goes through when they don't feel like it. Everybody. And if the saints only operated when it was it's convenient and when everything is going well. We wouldn't operate at all. You can't let problems and squabbles and different things like that keep you out of church. Keep you away from God. Keep you away from your destiny. Amen. It didn't let the person you were arguing with stay home, did it? It didn't make them stay home. 
And you sitting there looking at them, talking, you sitting there going, look at them. They in church, sitting up there praising the Lord. They know they did me wrong. Just look at them. The Holy Spirit is asking you, why are you looking at them? So why, why aren't you praising the Lord also? Amen. Maybe they'll get delivered while I'm praising them. But I know you ain't going to get delivered sitting there looking at them. I know, I know, I know what's not going to happen for you. Say amen. amen. We're in this together. The Lord began to, I'm, I'm finished, but the Lord began to deal with me about this as he showed me the big money that the world has to put on their programs and to fight and to change laws and all that kind of stuff. God said, look at this. All of a sudden, ain't nobody, even the Republicans, ain't nobody trying to even protect the women anymore, you know, to keep transgenders from competing in women's sports. The Republicans all of a sudden dropped it. They lost their appetite for it. You know why they lost it? Apple is coming. Apple is coming. We can't afford, we can't afford to offend Tim Cook. He's out the closet celebrating homosexual. He's coming. Apple. To, to those politicians, they spell Apple, J-E-S-U-S. Apple is coming. With them big paying jobs. So you know what we can't do? We can't offend them. So let's, so let's, let's let that go. And you know who's caught up in the middle of all this? The saints. For the saints must continue to say, Jesus is coming. 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 Hallelujah. Father, while I'm praying, if you want the Lord to anoint you with sobriety and vigilance, that mind to be careful, the ability to stay awake, the ability to watch and pray, the ability to keep your eyes on what God is doing, ability to be spiritually informed to not fall asleep at the switch when the Lord is counting on you to be awake if this is you and you want this and you understand the importance of these things to the whole body of Christ quickly come to the altar and I want to pray for you I want to pray for you quickly come quickly come Lord I want my Diligence. I want my, my fire. Lord, I want it. I want my diligent mind. I want, oh God, to be vigilant. I want to stay awake. Glory to God. Vigilance, vigilance, vigilance. I want the ability to resist, resist the devil. Vigilance, sober-minded. Oh God, I dare not think I'm stronger than what I am. You got to know, you got to know that there's something out there that you can't handle. You, you, you got to know that, that there are situations that's stronger than all of us. And it takes God. It takes God. It takes God to keep us and to strengthen us. Father, we lift our hands to you. In the name of Jesus, we lift our hands. We lift our hands. We lift our hands. Mm, mm, mm. 
we lift our hands to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we ask for your anointing. Give us, oh God, to be sober-minded, to hear. The disciples didn't hear him that night. Peter said 60 years ago, we didn't hear him. And he writes and says, 60 years later, y'all, please hear me. We didn't hear him. God help us to hear the seriousness of the hour. Anoint us to hear. Anoint us to hear. Anoint the entire body of Christ to hear. Oh God, to be sober, to be sober, sober here in the sanctuary, sober on YouTube live, sober Facebook live. God, anoint us to hear in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, to be vigilant. Yes, you are sovereign, but there are some things that we must do. Anoint us to be vigilant, to be busy. Hallelujah. Busy watching, busy praying, busy paying attention, busy on our knees, busy in the scripture, busy reading the Bible, busy, busy in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God, anoint right now. Strengthen us right now. Strengthen us right now in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray on this Father's Day that you put this anointing on every man. On every man. God, give him his fire back. God, give him his fire back. In the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Give us strength, Lord, to be on fire for you and to have a mind to serve you and a mind to live right before you, to walk up right before you in the name of Jesus because you're our God and you're our King and you're our Savior. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, Jesus, touch on the altar. Yes, Lord, touch, touch right now. Touch every man, touch every woman, touch every boy. Touch every girl, hallelujah. Give us to be hip to what Satan is doing. We don't want to be ignorant of his devices, but oh God, give us power, power to know that we're in it together. In the name of Jesus, power to say to ourselves, if she can make it, I can make it. If they can go through, I can go through. If she can withstand the storm and the rain, then so can I. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Give him your mind. Give him your mind. Give him your mind. Give it to him. Make me strong, Lord. Anoint me as never before. Glory. 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 my mind keep me sober keep me vigilant when I come to church Lord calls me to hear see this is why this is why this is why this is why you have to be careful and ain't nobody told me nothing this is why you have to be careful who your friends are see because some of you you get tied up with people and they say things to you, so you can't hear the gospel. You can't, you can't hear preaching. Because in your mind, when you get with your buddies and get online and y'all go to texting and 
doing your little cryptic things, you actually fight the gospel. Not knowing that who you are destroying in the long run is yourself. Some of you, the Lord, have delivered you from great deliverances. Now, you don't see it, but for those who have spiritual eyes, you can see Satan pulling you right back in there. And you came out of great things. But the first sign of the devil bringing you back into what God brought you out of, no matter how deep you were in it, the first sign of Satan bring, taking you back there is that he separates you. He separates you. He separates you. Have, have you almost afraid to say amen lest your talking buddies may look at you funny? He separates you. You got to break that yoke. Because some of us, God have brought us from a mighty long way and we're determined that we're going to never, ever, ever go back into that again. Because she's, see, some things you can't go back to. Because if you go back to them, you can't get, come out. Because you become seven times worse than the way you were. See, I got to quit. I got to close. But the Lord has shown me these things. Take this one. Seriously. This is a warning to the body. This is a warning to the worshiping servants during Jesus Pride Month, the people that God had given me to pastor. And don't you let nobody else in here pastor you. God, God didn't give them. God didn't give them the spiritual oversight. And you know what? They don't love you like your pastor loves you. What they love is they love you as long as you're agreeing with them and you're part of their shady deals. But if you let God bring you out, that's when the joy flows. Because now you, you, you have someone whose only vested interest is your spiritual welfare. All I want you to do is to make it. I want you to get out and stay out. But not stay out for six months, but for the rest of your days. And, and then you land uh, somewhere in glory. Then I have done my part and you have done yours. Give the Lord praises. You can go back to your seats. Praising the Lord. Hallelujah. My soul loved Jesus. Bless his